What's going on guys? This is B from Kong's R Us and welcome to Monday and I'm going to be doing some live modding for you guys. But first off, I'm using a new mic setup. This is a Rode kind of omnidirectional mic so I hope it can pick up all the sound wherever I'm at. So please give me a thumbs up if I sound a little bit funky. It's hard for me to check audio. But today I'm going to be hopefully modding up this bad, bad boy, boy right, right here. here. And there's my first audio thing where I have to make sure I mute all the different cameras that I have. Um, so right now I have my V pin set up. If you guys haven't checked out my next level show, which I did a few weeks ago, I have been modding this guy here. And sorry for the bright light here. I'm trying to get some good angled lighting. Um, I modded my uh, at Games Legends pinball cab already with a Star Trek The Next Generation theme. So it already has the artwork done on the sides. I already have a back box that's been modded by the one only Bobby Vu. So it's really pretty much getting the internals, everything up and running. And then afterwards, I'll be able to add in my solenoid. So today's goal is to get all of this surround sound feedback installed into the cab. Um, so hopefully that's the goal for today. 
Uh, so there was an echo Blast was saying. So let me just double check my audio and double check to see how I sound. Does it sound okay, you guys? Check, check. Does it sound okay? I'm sorry for the, the live audio, but I just want to make sure that you guys can hear me okay and there's not like a crazy echo. It sounds good. Give me a thumbs up so I can check it out. All right. Audio is great. Perfect. Thanks, Robbie Broadway. I appreciate that. All right. So uh, let's get into it. Let's start talking about the parts that I'm using to do surround sound feedback. So for folks that don't know what surround sound feedback is, I want to just point out two different resources that have been extremely helpful. And I'm going to move this laptop over here, hopefully without moving anything, uh, that have been super, super helpful um, in, in, in doing this guide. And so if you haven't already checked out their websites, it's uh, the Pinscape guide for virtual pinball building is super, super awesome, as well as Major Frenchie's uh, guide for MAME in a Box. So let me go ahead and share this and make this big here. Okay, so here's the two guides here. So if you haven't already checked it out, this is a lot of text. If you're ever getting into the virtual pinball world, this is considered the Bible, the Pinscape guide for building. And you can see if you go back, there's all these different things about everything you could ever want to know about pinball is here in the system. So if we're talking about surround sound feedback, there's an audio systems, which is number 41. There's tons and tons of different options you can do for setting up your speaker systems, which amps to get some different options. And I'm showing you this because there's no one right way to do this. There are tons of different ways and options. So this is just going to be my version of doing the surround sound feedback mod. And the same thing that goes for Major Frenchie's website called Mame in a Box. He has an awesome website and YouTube video that shows you how to do surround sound feedback. So these are some of the exciter examples that we'll be using, the different amps that are available. So check out these resources. If you're starting to venture into the world of surround sound feedback, check these out because this is where I got my guides from and where I'm going to be basing a lot of my stuff in terms of my knowledge um, of, of doing this. And again, I am by no means an expert in any of this. I still feel I'm pretty new and maybe some of you guys that might be watching might have more experience in this with, than me. So this is a learning journey for you guys to check it out and follow along with me. Yes, Pinscape Guide by MJR, Michael Roberts is really, really awesome. Uh, can you do a Picard maneuver with the mod? <laughs> Hopefully I can sit down afterwards and say, make it so. Uh, but the coolest thing I haven't figured out yet is uh, I, have, I have this phaser here that I'm eventually going to be modding and putting a button here. So I can add it to the bottom part as my, my launcher in addition to having the plunger too. So getting this phaser uh, put in here is going to be a pretty awesome uh, next project, but I, I got to get the right button and everything installed. So that's going to be pretty fun. So I, I love Star Trek The Next Generation. I, I know folks that saw my Star Wars pinball knew that I was a Star Wars fan, but I also grew up a bit of a Trekkie, just a space sci-fi geek in general. So uh, this was cool to have not only a Star Wars cab as my arcade went up, but as I was thinking about what I wanted to skin my Legends pinball, I thought Star Trek would be the most appropriate. So a huge shout out to um, Justin Kukic from Gulf Coast uh, Decals are the ones that did the decals for the sides. And as well as Bobby Vu, obviously, that made my amazing back box. So this is a custom back box, as you see there, that has a 24-inch screen on the back. That is the stock 15.6 inch DMD that were the, it was the original back glass is here. You can see the size of it compared to the 24 inch screen up there. And then I added two speakers inside the back box as well as the stock speakers in the bottom. So these speakers are the bottom speakers or the stock ones. So I wanted to keep the stock speakers and exciters pretty much the same. I didn't want to go into wiring in and tapping into the stock speakers. And so I just installed, I since I had a lot of space, extra speakers there, which will be my, my two mains. And then I'm going to be installing a sub and then doing the exciter feedback. So that's pretty much the goal for today is get everything set up. Uh, Panic Flip Gaming Surround Sound Feedback is meant mainly for VPX, Visual Pinball, and are coded for SSF. Yes, so this whole setup is mostly for running my PC and not to work with the Legends Pinball um, setup. So I was saying I'm pretty much going to leave the, the stock sound for the Legends Pinball side of things. If I'm playing those tables, it's pretty much going to run the stock speakers and sound. But my PC that I put together... Um, I already gutted my PC and stuck it inside. So the first part of this video today, and you can see the hole that I made for the sub, was just showing you guys that I went to the effort of gutting my PC completely and making it so that I can just put it inside of my cab. Since there's a lot of space in here that you see, this is the main motherboard that houses everything. So it's pretty much a square. I used a Dell Optiplex, um, I think it was a 7010. 
let me grab the case for you guys so you can see it. It's um, where did I put it? Oh, back over here. I'll grab it later. But it, it's a the ninety a Dell ninety ten Optiplex. I believe it was a a, a small form factor, not a or a slim form factor. It wasn't the the smallest one that you can get. And then all 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 you need to do is remove all the screws for the board. This is the power supply here, and then this is the hard drives that I just put on there. And I pretty much just mounted it using these little feet here, the PCB feet and just mounted it to the bottom of the cab. And so this is my secure spot. Um, I have a low profile graphics card in here, a GTX 1650, 16 gigs of RAM. I believe it's an i5-3470. And then uh, uh, a couple of different hard drives, a solid state drive, and then an extra hard drive here. So a pretty standard PC that I had in here. I wanted to gut it, put it inside so I didn't have anything hanging out extra. I didn't want to have something on the bottom if I, if I could avoid it. Uh, but you can see I put that big, big hole in there because that's where my sub's gonna go. So the whole point of this is we're gonna be installing all of these amps, exciters, we're gonna be installing a sub into that giant hole and uh, hopefully it works. We're already 11 minutes in, but let me start going back <laughs> and uh, start talking about the parts and everything. So you know about the guide, if you wanna go back and read the guide, that's perfect. But here's what I'm doing. I grabbed three different amps. These are 2.1 channel amps and or sorry 2.1 channel amps that i'm using so one of them are going to be for the main back box speakers my two mains right here and as well as the sub so one of these is going to be my main and i have a six inch pile sub that's going to go right there i drew it out this hole this five inch hole this is going to go in there along with those two speakers into one of the channel amps then i had the other 2.1 channel amps are for the exciters and so these are dayton audio um, DAEX58. -E and so these are some of the standard ones that people have used. I'm going to mount two of them to the sides near the front flippers. That's going to go into one. And then two of them are going to go to the back side on um, the back right here. And then in addition, the one channel, the point one channel, I'm also going to attach these uh, Dayton Audio Pucks. These are also transducer bass shakers, pretty much giant, big versions of these exciters. And this is just going to give a little bit more bottom sound to the one channel on these speakers. Now, a lot of other guides, like even I think Major Frenchie's guide, they don't use the 2.1 channel amps for the exciters. You could get away if you didn't want to add these extra transducers for the for the exciters. You could just use these regular standard uh, two channel amps. Or, and then this would work perfectly where you just have the exciters going into both of these. You don't need that extra 0.1 channel amp for the inside. But since I already bought these and I already had the extra pucks, I was just going to go the extra mile and add them in. Um, I might even test it with or without it because I really don't know how much additional sound is going to be produced by adding it. And I'll, I'll start off by saying also that I'm not a huge audiophile. So while I, I could hear definitely the difference between the stock speakers and this, you know, going the next level of adding in these pucks in addition to the exciters, I might have to tweak what's going on. Uh, and I wasn't even sure which sub to get. And I, I did so much research to figure out what parts. I even invested in seeing, like, could I get away instead of using a traditional sub speaker? Could I add in this giant transducer as my sub and stick it in there? And I actually put it in there just to see if it would shake and it would work. And um, and it sounded pretty good. So yeah, Panic Flick Gaming is saying, but you can use a five inch mini sub as well to beef up the low end sound, which corresponds to six siders nicely. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, I, in the 7.1 sound card, uh, right now I'm turning off the sub section. So I can definitely add in a full sub underneath the cab. I've seen people that use PC speakers in a full 2.1 setup so they can plug it into your sound card. Uh, we're only gonna be using, this is uh, my 7.1 sound card that we're gonna put in via USB. We're gonna use the 2.1 regular channel, the surround um, plug, and then the back plug for the three amps that are here. Um, so that's the setup. That's the goal. Panic Flip Gaming, I know that you have an awesome VPN setup, so I really appreciate you being here so that you can, uh, you know, share along, give me more tips, if you will, along the way. Uh, again, we're all learning together. It's just a live demo. It's a live demo so you can see what I'm doing wrong and what you guys can do. All right. Let's go to the back and let's get everything kind of set up with the amps. I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna install my amps so I can have them cleanly set up. And then I'm gonna plug in, I'm gonna start setting up my um, my exciters and mounting them. And since I don't wanna do like a ton of drilling live, what I'm probably gonna do is for right now, just gonna use double-sided tape and attach these to the side for testing to make sure everything sounds, and sounds good. And I did remember seeing that there's different ways to mount it. So you do have 
the holes here which you can mount screws into the side of the cab but i did read somewhere that actually using kind of a um, double-sided sticky tape and and mounting an adhesive gives a better adhesion to the wall too and, and helps absorb some of the vibration so i don't know again it, this is going to be my first time actually testing it in the cab so i want to see how it sounds with just doing the sticky tape because that's going to be easiest for me to install maybe i'll go back and put in the screws so let me know if um what if if you've heard anything so panic Fit gaming let me know if 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 you've heard installing these via screws or actually mounting it uh, is better in terms of audio sound it's all about science we're testing it out okay so i'm going to run around to the back so you guys can see. All right, here we go to the back of the cab. And I'm going to turn my microphone. And then here, I'll just turn my camera here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. All right, so now I'm on the back side of my V-pin cabinet. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me okay still. Let me move the mic a little bit closer so that at least you guys can hear me. All right, Granger sells it that way. All right. Okay. All right, so uh, the back side of the, the board has been completely, this is a non-standard back box. Uh, Bobby Vu modded it. He put everything in here. This is my Rachel board down here that's connected on the bottom that I had to mount pretty creatively to be able to get it to fit with the EDB cable. So, you know, however you design your back box, if you're using the stock one, that's up to you. But I did find that I had this large space here on this back bar to actually fit my three amps here. So that if I wanted easy access to be able to, uh, you know, get to the amps, I could just mount them here and get access pretty easily. So this is my goal to adding the mounts on this board right here. I've seen people, once they've added the uh, cover back on, that they put it on the outside, they've mounted it on the inside, underneath the cab. You pretty much can put it anywhere you want to. This is, again, just where I'm putting it. So... Uh, I have my three amps, some sticky sided tape. Let's just get to it. Let's start mounting them and getting them prepped and ready so that we can wire everything through as much as possible. So this is going to be my amp that I'm going to put. Let me see if this is the right place so you can see it. Let me move this up. All right. So here is where I'm mounting my first amp. I'm going to mount it with the, the things facing down. I'm just going to stick it in. Boom. Just like that. I don't know if there's enough space inside the stock back box. It's been a while since I've used the stock back box, so I have no idea if this would work there. So you might need to play around and stick it on the inside of your cab or wherever else you need to. All right, so this is my main one that I'm going to be using. So it's hard to see what's center. I may recenter these later on, but let's just do this for right now and put this here. Okay, so that's going to be my main right there. All right, fantastic bill. Thanks, Techno Billy. All right, and then the last amp, we're gonna stick this right over here so that we can get all three amps on the back box. And I might secure and screw these down, but double-sided tape is a modder's best friend just to get this all going, okay? And actually, I've tested my cover closed up and it actually closes up pretty nicely. Everything should fit nice and securely. I can get access to everything, turn the knobs, should be nice and perfect. All right. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is start. I think I should mount my exciters. I didn't really think through exactly what I wanted to do first. But oh, actually, I probably let me. Yeah, let me let me grab some of the other supplies and things. And just since we already have the camera on the back, I'm just going to start talking about uh, the rest of the supplies that we need. Uh, so these are the RCA cables that we're going to be plugging into the, the sound card. So your sound card is a 7.1 USB sound card that you, you can buy if your PC doesn't have one. So these are just general RCA cables that I'm going to plug in here and start wiring through this case because there's going to be a lot that we need to fit, fit through this little section right over here. So um, hopefully we can get everything through that little hole and you guys can see what's going on. All right. And uh, apologize, I'm, I'm a little bit blind to looking at the chat. So if there's anything else going on. And I should have probably had a sidekick to help me read chat comments as I go through this, but hopefully this is entertaining for everybody. We'll get this going through. So I'm just going to soak these wires through, plug in these RCA cables, which I got pretty cheaply from, <clears throat> from the 99 cent store, not 99 cent store, Daiso. If you have a Daiso next to you, these were super, super cheap. So hopefully you guys can still hear me okay. And um, as I'm talking through. 
All right, double-sided Gorilla Tape for the win. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to plug in this other RCA cable, soak these through the bottom side. So I'm going to have my sound card mounted on the underside here. So this should be a big enough hole where we should be able to grab everything and get it mounted through. All right, next up. Let's see. Got my double-sided tape. I'm gonna go back over here now to the main body of the cab, and we're going to install the actual exciters into the cab, and then I'm gonna drill down, and um, this is my six-inch sub. It's a pile that I'm going to screw in to make sure that it's secure here too. All right, let's get this microphone back up here. Hopefully you guys can hear. All right, let's get it going. Double-sided tape for the win. Lots and lots of double-sided tape and Gorilla Tape. <laughs> All right, once closed, you can adjust the amps. Yes, exactly. All right, so I'm going to pretty much be, I should, probably should have did this earlier where I stuck double-sided tape on everything ahead of time. Live modding, what else? What else could go wrong? I don't know who else does this. Like I'm probably one of the few folks that are uh, trying to do this live and, and see what else I can go wrong. I had a, an idea and a game plan, but I was working and doing a lot of the testing live. And I thought it'd be fun to just jump on and show you guys how long it takes almost like in real time to get some of this stuff done. A lot of times when I do a formal tutorial, you want to edit it and get it straight done to the point. But this, this will show you a little bit of real time this of getting this done. So let me check to see if there's anything else going on. <laughs> All right. Let me know if you guys have also done anything else, if I'm missing anything for, for the surround sound feedback. Um, I definitely already have it working with VPX. I know that in order to get it working with FX3 that you need to have Dolph things enabled and some other things going on. Um, I did want to make you know, this cabinet more dedicated to VPX and arcade and trackball because of the, the controller setup. So I didn't plan to originally put FX3 on this build, but I thought, why not? Since I already bought all the tables, I went ahead and added the FX3 tables. And I got to say, they play really nice on this three screen setup and uh, having the 32 inch monitor compared to the 24 inch monitor that I have in my arcade one up. I still like the arcade one up Star Wars setup, but I haven't touched it in a while because I've been spending so much time on this um, this ALP because there's so much more I knew that I wanted to do with it with more space and everything. So that's just to say, I think you can do so much more modding potential wise with the ALP with the Legends pinball than you can with the arcade one up. But I, you know, in terms of getting a simple setup and reusing the stock parts and still feeling like it's pretty good. I honestly think it might be easier to add a PC to the arcade one up and add a second monitor to the back glass and then reuse the stock stuff. Cause I know there's not a lot of ton of stuff for like, um, there's not a lot of space inside the arcade one up to add everything. And maybe you could do the surround sound feedback. You can do all that stuff, but maybe it was just me. My, my plans for modding the AOP was just way beyond what I originally intended <laughs> and it just got crazy. So, all right, I'm going to put, I'm going to put, four on each one and see if that's a good adhesion enough. Maybe that's too much. Maybe this is overkill, but we're going to do it. We're adding some double-sided tape to our four exciters. Exciting. These are gigantic beasts of some exciters. All right. Uh, I am going to mount the big pucks once I get them, but a lot of this, again, once you're, you're mounting, you probably are doing a lot of testing first and making sure things work before you do any final, final installation. So I like I like the thought of just doing double-sided tape for now and just testing out the sound and positioning and then being able to replace everything where I need to. All right, so that's one, two, three, four exciters. I need Mrs. Kong to cut the tape. <laughs> yeah, she's still working right now, so hopefully she doesn't mind me doing this. I normally don't do live streams in the middle of the week, but I figured I was working all weekend trying to get stuff and running. It's fun to just have, a day, right? Where you're just modding and working. Okay. 
So I'm going to move this out. I'm going to take out my 2.0 amps that I'm not using. I originally tested using these amps and they were fine, um, but I'm going to use it. I'm going to use the 2.1 amps. All right, so let's go ahead and mount these as close as we can to the front flipper button. So I'm going to do one here and then one on this side over here. Hi, Kenny. Is it going? What's that? On Monday? It's on a we Monday? Must, we must do it. Okay, go ahead. You can go get dressed. All right, so we're going to add one right here. Right underneath the left flipper is where I'm going to put it, facing this way. And this side is actually going to be a little bit trickier. So this inside, um, there's not a lot of space in between where the plunger is, as well as this side here. So I might have to do some wiring first to make before I tape it down because it's going to be a little bit difficult to get it set up. All right. So let's take this. I'm going to take my wire. And again, you can just use, I actually happen to have audio wire that I've already spliced together and added that I'm going to be putting in, but you can use, I think they recommend 18 gauge wire is what they use. So this was just, I think 16 gauge audio wire that I had for years and I'm finally just reusing them and purposing them. So pretty, pretty much use what you have. Because uh, that's that's what's what a modder does. You use the tools that you have and then buy what else you need. Okay, so I'm going to plug these in ahead of time so that I can not struggle with putting them in. So you have your negative, which is the smaller one, and then your positive, which is the bigger one for most of these exciters. And uh, I prep these by adding these, these spade connectors so that I can I easily plug them in and out. A lot of people sometimes maybe solder these on. So those are options for you to connect these into here. And then on the other end, I just added in some frail crimping tubes that'll just let me easier plug them in and I already labeled them black and red. So this is really up to you to use whatever tools you have to connect this and then you can go from there. But hopefully this is long enough and I used my, my super long one. Is this the longest one that I was using? Was that right? Let me double check. Let me double check because I had two different wire lengths that I was using. These are my long ones. Those are my super long ones. Okay, these are my short ones. All right, yeah, this is the right one. Okay. All right, let's plug it in. We need to spend more screwing around with this than actually playing. You're so true, <laughs> Panic Flip Gaming. I mean, I think any modder really loves the process more than actually playing because I pretty much play to test. And I actually don't even play, I don't, you know, I play the three three balls to have just to say that I played it. But other than that, then yeah, I'm, I'm not really playing to, to have fun. <laughs> not yet anyways. The modding is, is half the fun for me, if not more. All right, so here comes my exciter, which is gonna go right underneath again. Pretty much right in between the button and the um, accelerometer, the stock accelerometer. Okay, so that's going to be the side ones. I think the adhesion is going to be good. I think adhesion would be fine. I don't think I'll have to screw these in. All right, let's do the back ones here. So we got the back ones. Yeah. Stick these on, stick these off. And I actually, I actually think wiring these up now is going to be easier than... Um, me trying to plug it in afterwards. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get these plugged in as well. Nice and tight and secure. I like how they're different sizes so you don't screw up when you already mount these and get them going. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna mount this. You know, you have a lot of options on where to mount it, right? So there's this back bar area that I'm actually gonna be putting contactors and solenoids. So as the next phase of my mod, I actually bought these contactor solenoids to be adding in true contactor force feedback in here. And I'm going to be mounting three to this back wall, two to this front wall right here, and then two to the side. So um, yeah, I'm going to be putting in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think so. That's I think that's how I'm going to do it. So I pretty much will have 
Yeah, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these will have three each, and then I'll have two on the side here. So these giant contactors are gonna go on the bottom. So I have to make some space so that they um don't conflict with each other. It's gonna be beastly. All right. All right, so let's, I'm probably gonna mount this here then. So that way it'll give me a little bit of space for the contacts underneath. So I don't wanna put it directly underneath and have it compete with space. So let's stick it right here. And I'm just guessing, I'm not even like, not even measuring. I feel like that's a good space. We're gonna go with it. Okay. All right, here's the last one. I got these Daytons from Amazon. I think I got one of them used because it actually looked like this was already soldered a little bit. Um, so you might get it in various conditions. We'll see how they sound. But quality should be pretty good on these guys. It says they're 8 ohm, 25 watts. I am ready, ready to hear this. Uh, I was doing some testing to make sure everything works, and I just had them pretty much on my carpet, which was absorbing all the sound. So I've not heard it when it's been truly mounted. So I'm really excited to, to see how that sounds. All right, we're going to mount this one on this side of the wall now. So kind of just lining it up where I had my previous one on the other side. That looks about right. I'm not, I'm not super exact. I probably could measure it and have it be exactly where everything was, but all right, exciters are installed. I just need to plug in the last cable. So this is my last audio cable that I had from this one. I'm gonna plug it into this front one that I missed earlier. All right. What are you using for your flipper solenoids? Uh, so yeah, I'm using the Siemens contactors. I don't have any solenoids installed yet. So I will be eventually adding in the, 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 the Siemens contactors on the side as well as on this bar right here. So, you know, I knowing that I'm gonna have solenoids, I might replace where I put these because I want the contactor to go right here. Um, it might have to go on a different side because there's a not, not a lot of space for this as well. There's not a lot of space in here. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Kongzara says, there's not a lot of space. I've taken, I've taken up so much space. I'm actually creeping out into our hallway right now. So <laughs> thanks, Mrs. Kongzara. All right, so here we go. Everything is plugged in. Let's get this wired back and we'll do some nice clean wire management later on. So this is the front. These are the two front ones. This is gonna go all the way to the back into one of the amps. And then these two are gonna go to the other one. All right. And uh, in terms of the stock wires that still work in here, this, this is the stock cable that I had to still kind of have just across so I didn't get stuck. Um, so hopefully, hopefully everything will not conflict with each other. Let's get everything wired up. Right. Let's bring this back over here. All right. Can you guys see the back now? Okay. On the back side, uh, these are the main speakers. So this is the right speaker when you're facing it. Moving the mic back closer again so you guys can hear me while I talk. All right. All right, hopefully you can hear me okay. So this is gonna go into the right channel, which is this one here. Okay. And then this left side speaker is gonna go on the other side. Simple, simple. That's gonna get plugged in later on. And then our sub, I forgot our sub, 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 sub. Sub speaker is already going to plug in to the sub output right here. So that's the sub output, and then this wire is going to go down and through this hole and into the sub, which I need to screw down as well. But I might might do some testing first before I screw down the sub, because that's going to take a little bit more time. And then, uh, later on, I probably will do some, some bigger wire management, because getting everything to fit through this hole is going to be 
a little crazy, but got to make it work. Okay. All right. So now I'm just going to soak all the other wires through so we can get everything plugged in. Okay, so these are the front exciter wires that I have here. What I might do is I'm, I'm probably not going to soak it through the bottom part yet. I'm just going to get it attached, and then I will do some wire management later. So just for the sake to get it done quicker, let's do the, uh, this is the right one. Okay, so this is the left one. All right, so this is left. This left panel is going to be my, my front speakers. And then this one is going to be for my back rear exciters. And if you ever, if you happen to flip them and they go in the wrong direction, then you can always change your wires later on. So as long as you get everything wired up, tested, hopefully everything should work out just fine. All right. So now we have these. You know the worst part about this, of me doing this live right now, is that uh, my my second PC, my second laptop that I had planned to to do this kind of crapped out on me beforehand. So I'm actually using I'm using the PC that's inside of my V pin to run this camera right here. So I have a live PC that's on at the same time where I'm doing this. So I I don't recommend doing this. You should turn everything off. But you know I like to live dangerously because I ran out of time, and uh, we are hopefully doing this correctly all right so here are the exciter speakers for the back side that we're going to plug in all right so this is the right side ones over here hopefully it reaches okay. oh no i didn't make it long enough oh this is my fault for not not anticipating that it would be long enough. All right, so maybe this one I do need to soak it through the hole just so that it fits and I don't have to redo this. Okay. All right. Hopefully this fits. Yes, success. Sorry for the poor camera angle. It's probably was just seeing the side of my face. And then we should have the last one right over here. All right. All right. All the speakers are plugged in. Let's go back over here. Adam, what's going on? All right. Bobby's here too. Okay. Moving our mic. Moving our mic back. All right. So I have the sub speaker wires right here and uh, I guess the, the last thing I'm going to do later on is I'm going to add these pup transducers as the point one on the left um, on the the front and back speakers but I'm probably not going to do that today I'm probably going to wire it up see how it sounds and then I will add these in and I can put these anywhere essentially and and wire these up to the point one channels on the 2.1 amps so getting the 2.1 amps just give you that additional flexibility to upgrade it if you want to otherwise you can just use those cheap ten dollar amps it's no big deal all right, so let's add in a sub. All right. So I drilled that giant, giant hole down here last night. So this is just a five inch hole that I use with the hole saw. It's about half inch thick. So you definitely want to be careful when you're going through and make sure you do it cleanly. I did a little bit on the top side. Then I went from the bottom side because it has an arbor in it. So that way I didn't cut the bottom. And then I'm just going to have this mounted pretty much uh, right on top of this and already pre-drilled the whole slot. So, so let me just make sure I drill that down so it doesn't shake and get all crazy. So let's let's go ahead and secure down our sub. And uh, I think this is where folks recommend to place their subs, which is near the, the center in the middle. It's where traditional subs would be on a real V pin or a big v pin cab, I, I assume or I've heard. All right, so let's... Get this in here. All right. All right. There 
it is. Pile. Done. Okay, and now we can plug in our sub. And this is, a, I think it's a 4 ohm independent. So it can be either 4 ohms or 8 ohms, depending if you add an extra amp on both sides. So for this one, you just need to plug in one side, and this should work fine. Uh, I just have to remember which one is positive and negative, I think. The negative is always on the left, so that should work. And if it doesn't work, then we'll just flip it. All right, everything's plugged in. Let's plug in our um, our speaker. We got to plug in some power. Forty minutes in, not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> Only forty minutes to get this going. So this is our seven point one surround sound uh, USB card. I think it's about thirty bucks. Afterwards, I'll probably put links to everything into. Uh, the description in case you want to get it. So I just have double-sided mounted tape to here. Uh, might, might just mount this. I might even mount this on the back side easy too. So just so I can get access to it. You don't really need to have your sound card anywhere. So maybe I'll just mount the sound card to the back right here. Let's plug it in and then just have the wire coming through the bottom, right? There's that way I can just have it nice and clean. I can access everything, can change anything out that I need to. Um, but yeah, let's just do it. Let's just get everything connected first. See if it works. Okay, so for my main channel speakers, which is this middle one, that's going to go into the 2.1 green on the, uh, the sound card. The front exciters are actually gonna go to the back one. So I know that's a little bit counterintuitive, but if you're, they state it pretty well that if you're looking at the V-pin cabinet, the front of what's facing you is kind of like the back of the room. And the, then, so that's why the front exciters that are closest to you are on the back. And then the ones towards the back of the cab are the surround or 5.1 side ones. So those are the, the three inputs that we're going to be putting on. Let's just go ahead and I don't know if I'm not going to double side it. Well, I say it and I say it. I was like, ah, live modding. You have all these decisions, but a good thing with double sided tape is you can undo anything you want to. Let's go ahead and just double side this tape here. I'll clean up all the wires later on. Let's just put this down and I'm going to plug in this USB into my PC right here. All right. All right, that is plugged in. The last thing I need to do for my amps is to actually give some power. So let me I want to make sure that you guys can still hear me when I'm on the backside working on my amp stuff. All right, so for the amps, uh, they need 12 volt power. And I think ideally it's three amps. So 12 volt, three A amps that you need to power everything. Um, so I have a couple of, of three, 12 volt 3A adapters right here. Um, where are they? Okay. There they are. So here's one of them. So I'm just right now splitting a 12 volt 3A adapter into two power. I eventually am getting a 12 volt. Um, shoot, I might. Dang it, it's too long. <laughs> oh no, I made them too far apart. I can't use this splitter. Oh man, these are the things that you don't think about when you're doing this live. Like I originally had this splitter and I just had the amps next to each other, but now the amp is too far away for me to use this splitter. <laughs> How lame. All right, I might just have to grab another uh, 12 volt adapter from somewhere and plug in three separate ones though. I might have to change my plans or I might need to grab an extender. I think I might have an extension cable. A 12 volt extension cable. So let me do that. Pretty sure I do. All right. So that's one of the amps that's plugged in. Okay. Here is another one that's plugged in. Okay. And let me get an extender really fast. So if you've ever modded an arcade one up, uh, they usually come with these little extension 12 volt adapters to plug in from the PCB to the back of the cab, but they work as extension 
cables for 12 volt adapters. All right, so all three of my amps. Oops. All right, that was loud. <laughs> I plugged it in. We'll see if something else is uh, is on. I need to turn down my volume. It's time to ready to do some some testing. Holy crap! All right, let me let me turn down the amp volume on everything to low, and then we'll set everything up. And hopefully, hopefully this works. Cross the fingers. All right, so let's turn everything down to low zero. Turn everything on. Okay, that sounds pretty bad. Maybe something else is playing at the same time. Let me double check my audio. D-pan is there. Up drum, sound, speaker device. Okay, I'm gonna turn this all the way down. Okay, we're muting. We're muting our speakers all the way down. All right, I hope this works. Let's turn everything back on. Maybe they're too close to each other. All right. There's a little slight buzzing going on right now, but I'll see if I can adjust everything later on. Okay. All right. We did it. We did it. We did it. We installed our surround sound feedback so far, but does it work is the key. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I wonder if I can share my screen and see if we can get this going. Nice art. Too bad the secret hideout erased the legacy of Star Trek The Next Generation. Yeah. All right, here we go. Overblown speaker sounds. I know that all too well. <laughs> Ian's here. Hey, thanks, Bobby, for being here and supporting. All right, so let's share my screen just so you can see what I'm doing. Share. All right. I want to make this pretty much what I'm sharing right now. Okay, so you guys can see my screen. I'm pretty much sharing my entire desktop right now. And I have my audio set to, um, I wonder if there's gonna be a lot of feedback. So let me, let me see if I turn on the volume if there's gonna be feedback. So this is first test. I think that's because I have StreamYard playing. So let me, let me mute the other side and, uh, and turn off my sound. So hold on, I'm gonna go on mute really fast so I can test my sound. It's probably due to streaming. All right, so I didn't think about how I can play sound from my speakers and do testing at the same time. So uh, did I enable 7.1 surround and VPX? Ed? Yes, I have. And so I wanted to show what I did to set up. Maybe I'll just do that first and show you what I did to set up the sound card and then also set up VPX. And then I'll try to turn on my cameras and do something else because I need to plug in a separate laptop uh, so that I can show you when I stick the monitor back on if it actually works in place. So let's go to um, sound change sound systems. So you can see here that uh, my playback device is this USB device here. And so if I right click the device and configure speakers, I'm going to be using 7.1 surround sound. And then here's where you can actually uh, test everything else going on. Um, so I think it's because I am sharing my screen and doing stuff, but you want that surround sound setting. So you want to do this, you want to go to next. You want to uncheck the center and subwoofer. You want to go to next again. And then you do want to check off the full range speakers, left, right, and surround sound speakers. So this is the setup that I was told to do or that I that I read through all the different uh, 
forums and places. So hopefully that's the right setup for that. And then the other thing you need to do in VPX, let's let's go to VPX and see that it's still set up right. Visual pinball. Okay. And obviously nothing's gonna run because I just have the one screen set up. You go to preferences, audio options, and then you select your USB device and then select 7.1 surround sound feedback. Okay, so everything is set up. I think we're gonna be ready to go. I'm going to try to switch out my camera and undo the camera from this so that I can show you guys the, the gameplay footage. So. All right, hopefully that's gonna work. So let me stop sharing my screen. That was the setup for everything at the moment. All right, so hopefully you guys, this is still entertainment. Why is Riker looking at us like we're a piece of space candy? <laughs> that's true, Riker is very judgmental. Who knew, who knew, who knew, who knew, who knew? Who knew? All right, so uh, let's install the, um, the, the monitor back and see if we can get playing. All right, I'm going to really quickly get my second laptop set up. Hopefully it's working now. And then I'm gonna get my monitor installed and then we should be good to go. All right, so I'm going to unplug this main camera just for right now so you'll only see this camera right now. I'm gonna take rid of this camera. It's just me, I gotta unplug the other camera that's plugged into the actual PC that's running the VPN. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> Riker, get all the ladies in the show. He's a ladies man. What can you do? What can you do about the Riker? I had fond memories of watching TNG, but I actually really got into Star Trek during Voyager. I don't know why. I just, I remember the first time I saw the shape design of the Voyager, um, the Starship Voyager, and I was like, man, that's a super cool take on you know starfleet ships and so i really liked seeing a another asian gentleman as part of the crew i know sulu was there but henry or harry kim was awesome to watch on screen so i really like harry as a, as a character in the star trek universe but it was really different i just really liked it all around all right let me enter the studio I'm just setting up a second laptop so I can get the other camera back on right now. All right. Let's add it back to the studio. Here we go. All right, we're back. Back in action. Here is the setup. And now we're going to put our monitor back in. We're going to turn on the Legends pinball. We're going to see if everything works. That's the goal. So here is our monitor. Putting it back in carefully. This is the front side. Um, normally I will plug in the 12 volt power first and then the 30 pin LVDS connection afterwards. So I'm just gonna carefully set this here and then see if I can reach around and plug in the 12 volt cables into the back side. Sometimes it's actually a little hard to see it. So I like to like lift this up here and then plug it in from here while I have some nice visibility. So I'm going to, to get in here. It's probably gonna be super bad YouTube, but gotta do it. Get in here into tight spaces. That's one plug. And then two plugs. All right. All right, that might have been the most awkward thing doing live on stream, but yeah, I plugged in the power into the stock power supply. So hopefully that's all done. Okay. And now I'm going to plug in the 30 pin LVDS connector to the back, make sure I ground that as well. So I'm going to stick this back up here. Make sure this goes all the way back. Be careful with your monitor screen. These actually are kind of sensitive. I've seen some issues with people's monitors getting out of whack, so definitely be sensitive with that. But yeah, there's that. I'm going to run around to the back and plug in the 30 pin LVDS connector 
back into here. So excuse my reach, use my pen, get everything aligned, and plug in. Should probably ground it, but we'll do some testing first without it and see how it goes. All right, I think we're almost ready. I think we're almost, almost ready to see what's going on, see what's happening. Okay, there's the pinball cabinet. Now I'm going to reinstall my panel. Here is our control deck panel, the arcade controller, which I absolutely recommend because they fixed the eight-way issue and it helps a ton with navigation like the experience of navigating the ui which if you saw my video about complaining about the ui experience it just they finally did it they they it all you press the a button to select and you press the b button to go back and that's glorious i don't even bother with the exit buttons anymore for anything so a is consistently select and then b is consistently back so that's awesome so i'm just Rewiring up the, the stock exciters pins. It's kind of hard to see. Okay. And then there's a USB underneath. You guys want to see this? Just wiring this back up. We'll probably do a lot of a lot a lot a lot of wire management later on in the future. But for now, this is for the sake of testing for science so that you guys can see what's possible. All right, there it is. Hopefully everything works. Let's do it, let's boot it up. Let me make sure my ALP is on. I'm such a horrible person. I still had the ALP like still plugged in while everything was doing it. So don't follow my directions. Don't have everything plugged in. I hope everything still works, but let's flip it on and make sure that our main screen still works for everything. All right, praying. Do my dance, making sure everything still works. Booted it up, press the on button. There she is, Legends Pinball. And then the back glass, boom, Legends Pinball, still up and running. All right, so step one, we reinstalled. The monitor is back and working. Test first, we manage later. Yes, you need your controller. Modders rooms always look like a box of wires. It looks like a job site. Yeah, it does for sure. All right, cool. So. Um, the other thing that I did, and shout out to Technobilly, if you didn't see it earlier, I actually removed this entire section with the HDMI and USBs and plugged it into the backside. And then uh, due to his guidance too, I also soldered two, pit, two wires to make the little button for OTG. I actually wired it, check it out guys. You see this underneath. So I have the black button is my Rachel button. And this button is my OTG button right here. And so if I press that button, the silver button, that's what actually pops up the uh, OTG screen right here. So I don't have to reach all the way to the top. It's a super clean look. I left the volume button on the top over there. So big, big shout out to Technobilly. He was kind of showing me what he did. And after he showed me, I was like, yeah, that's definitely cleaner and a lot better. So now I don't have anything sticking out from the top. I just have all my USB and wires in the back, which I have access to, and I can just press the button underneath. So let's go into OTG mode. Okay, that's the screen. And then I got to press my Rachel button. So for those that got the Vibs board or the Rachel button, then I press the black button on the bottom, which is connected to my Rachel board. And then I have, da -da -da -dun. come on, come on, come on, come on, Rachel, come on, Rachel, come on, Vibs, Vibby to Vibs. There it is. Yes. Okay. So I have all screens up and running. Got my Vibs board working with the buttons. Got my OTG button. Got my surround sound feedback. Man, I'm excited to like actually finally test this out and see what it sounds like with the sound. But I'm scared what the sound is gonna sound like with the um with the microphone. So it might might get a little funky though. So I haven't thought about how I'm gonna do this because it was giving me feedback when I turn on the sound, but I don't know how to do it where. Maybe I just got to stop watching StreamYard from here and then just watch from over here. So, all right, so let's do it. Success, success, success. I'm going to cancel, let's see, StreamYard from here. I'm going to watch StreamYard just from over here 
All right, so I have my camera up here. I have another PC here. Sorry for the volume fun functionality, but I think, think this should work now. So let me test my sound and make sure my sound is working. All right. Sound. Boom. Yes. Okay, I'm going to go back to my sound devices and do a quick test on all of the different uh, the, um, the surround sound to make sure that I configured it right and that all the exciters are working. I probably should have did that before <laughs> beforehand. All right, so we're going to do a test. Let's do the left speaker. Yeah. Oh, you know what happened? Why it's so low? I The amps on the back, remember, I didn't turn the amp volumes up. So they're super low right now. Let me turn the amp volume back up. All right. All right. I'm moving everything to 12 o'clock for volume on everything right now. Let's see, see how that works. All right, so I turned on all my amps, move everything to 12 o'clock, so it's right up and down. Let's do the left one. Woo, that's loud. Okay, that's left speaker. That's the right speaker. The left, this was the back left one, back left, back left exciter, back right exciter, left front exciter right front exciter. So all the speakers are working beautifully. Oh, so I just went back into OGG mode. Okay. You know what? The other thing too is that randomly, since my um my buttons are really close to each other, I don't know if there's interference happening with the Vibs board signal, but my Vibs board, the button, sometimes switches back to the stock screen on its own. And so it has to do something with the length of the cable that I have my Rachel button all the way in the front, all the way to the back. Cause sometimes like it just happened. If you saw the back screen changed and I was trying to figure it out last night. And if I unplug the button and put in a shorter cable, it worked just fine. So see, like, do you see how it went blank? See how it went blank? That's really annoying. So I have no idea what's going on, but the, the button that's connected up front that is uh, going to my Rachel board is funky because it just went back to the stock one. I have to press the Rachel button again for it to work. So this is something, again, live modding. I have no idea what the issue is and it just will go back. So in order to, the, the cool thing about the Rachel board too, and I'll bring this around so you guys can see it. Ah, I just did it again. So for the Rachel board, you can see that there's a green and a blue button but if, if I unplug the, this is the micro switch button here, there's a manual button you can press to make it switch and have it stay. So I'm gonna unplug this for right now and just manually put it in the blue mode because I have no idea why it's switching back and forth. And for this test, I want to leave it where it works. So I'm just gonna unplug my Rachel button. I will troubleshoot that and fix it later. But for now, I'm ready to do some surround sound testing. I almost feel like the exciters need to be louder. They feel a little bit faint. I thought they would have been louder. Oh, you know what also? Where my volume is at like 88. So the speaker volume sounds really good. My exciters sound a little bit low. Maybe that's the vibration from this. You know, this is where now I'm hearing it. Maybe it's because the double-sided tape is absorbing the sound. I'm not sure. Um, hey, PK's here. What's going on, PK? Thanks for watching me uh, tear apart your legends machine and uh, having issues with the Rachel board. Nothing like a live modding session to see what's going on. I'm going to turn up the amp volume on the um, exciters. Okay. All right. The other thing, too, is my, my amps might be underpowered right now because I don't have dedicated... Um, power supplies for each one. I'm splitting the signal and it's a, I have the 12 volt, three amp power supply splitting it. So I need to get another power supply. I'm getting that later on. That sounds pretty good. All right. Uh, that's unchecked. All right, let's play some VPX. You guys ready? You guys ready? Here we go. We're going to go ahead and launch my version of Papa. Just since you guys are watching for the full effect, right? Let me, let me add back on my silver trim just because it looks all nice and neat and clean. Just pop it on so it looks very clean. All right, so this is my front end. 
that Star Trek The Next Generation is the first kind of uh, shortcut that I have. But I also have a list of trackball games that I have, uh, BPX tables, and then I have my arcade playlist as well. So these are all my BPX tables that are going on. It sounds loud. Oh, oh, okay, that's loud. All right, let's go. Let's do. All right, let me just go into Star Trek. I gotta play the marquee game, right? All right, here's where I get demonetized. Maybe I should turn it down. Oh, it doesn't matter at this point. I don't care. So <laughs> I'm done. All right, here, here comes the demonetization when you hear the surround sound for Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> oh, yeah, there it is. Nice rumble. I can feel it. All right. Let's go. Let's add in the coin because the coin mech is like one of the first things you hear when you're entering the thing. All right. Let's see. Coin. Coin mech. Not as loud as I thought it'd be. I think something else might be up. I don't hear the coin mech like I should. When I had tested it earlier, it sounded really, really loud. I feel like all my flipper sounds are just going from the side. All right. All right. Maybe I still need to enable something in VPX. Is Panic Flip Gaming still here? Jay's here. <laughs> uh, I think I think I need to set up something, reset up something because the surround sound is not it's not it's not working as I thought it would, and my flipper button connections came off. So I got to plug back to my red button connection. I could hear the sound, but and I thought I enabled it in VPX, but it's not. It's not playing as loud as I thought it would. Let me double check my sound one more time in VPX. All right, so let me go back to my system. Let's go back into opening up B pinball, visual pinball, VPX. I'm waiting on my pinball joystick too. The table B built is so impressive. Sounds amazing. It sounds all right, but there's it. You know, the, the key thing that you hear when you press the, the coin slot is you hear that really distinct, like click, 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 click. And it's super loud. When I was testing it earlier outside of my system, it sounded awesome. So I want to make sure I, maybe I, I need to collect, connect a different device. All right. So let me go back to VPX preferences, audio options, primary speakers, USB to sound device. Yes, that's the one that I want to use. Um, surround rear surround 7.1 surround front is rear back is side back box is front yes I'm pretty sure that's what I did back glass specific sound I want this to come from this as well general output device okay maybe I have to turn down the, the play volume or something let me know if there's any other settings I need to do DOF enabled uh, I don't think you need DOF uh, for just running VPX. If you're running FX3, I think you need to have it set up. But for, for just playing VPX, I think you just need to do this preferences stuff. Make sure your Windows didn't change your 7.1 to stereo. It likes to do that from time to time. Okay. Let me double check the, um, the sound settings that we had from last time. And double check. All right. Sound settings. Playback. USB device. Now my USB device is like, I wonder if I need to reinstall drivers for this because it worked earlier. Okay. Do do do. Do do do. Do do do. Do do do. All right. So all the test works for 7.1. Center sub are not checked off. Customization. I think that's right. Okay. No drivers hit config. You don't need it for Mr. Chip. Config Windows settings double check. Hit config. Did I did I do something else? All right, let me test it one more time. Configure speakers. Yeah, I think I had everything set up right. Yeah, I wish I could mod my air conditioning unit to test on with AC. All right. I'm I'm pretty sure this is all set up. All right, let's try running VPX one more time and see if I can if I can uh, 
hear the sounds that we should be hearing. We should be hearing in theory. And if I can't get it working, we'll see if we're good. All right, boom. So I check the next generation one more time. Please wait. I am now loading up the game. Ooh, those Have speakers fun. sound loud up front, but it's the exciters. I'm excited about the exciters. Triple check, triple check the amps. Yeah, the amps are all on. That sounds pretty good. Oh, yeah. The main sounds feel good, obviously, like the main speakers, but I'm not getting as much from the exciters that I thought I would. No, I still, I think there's a way to turn off the, the mechanical sounds on the back box. Audio setup to use the USB sound card. I'm pretty sure I did. Are you running from a laptop or Optiplex? I mean, it's from an Optiplex that's inside. But I still hear the flipper sounds coming from the main speakers and not from the exciters. Like if I listen to the exciters inside, I can hear it, but it's just not as loud. But let me see if I can feel the ball rumble. Like that's what you should hear, too, right? This whole thing is shaking. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty loud. All right. This is where like I don't play to play. I t I play to test, and I'm like, come on. I gotta get my launcher. Not just working, everything is working well. I love the pup packs for this too. Everything's set up with the full DD screen. It's super rumbly. Everything is rumbly, but I think I gotta play tweak the exciter sounds. Is that I'm, I'm not getting enough of the mechanical sounds that I want. Like I can barely feel the ball rolling, so I feel like I should be hearing it more, right? Kill the back box speakers until you get it dialed in. Yeah, thanks. You'll know when you have it set up properly. It's a huge difference with the coin drop. Yeah, I think so. I gotta tune in the exciters more. Good news is everything's working, right? Like so, I can hear the speakers coming from the exciters. I can hear everything set up. I felt like when I was doing my test and I just had the exciters on the floor, I could hear everything distinctly but maybe I set up something a little bit funkily, but at least I got it installed and it works. I just need to make sure that I dial it in. So I've already been going for an hour and 13 minutes. Uh, thank you guys so much for, for tuning in. Uh, pin vol is a must for sure. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bobby. You need to tune it. You need pin vol. All right, y'all, thanks. Uh, I'll definitely check out pin vol. I appreciate the, the feedback. I'm definitely new to this and just getting it installed. Obviously, I'm going to be adding solenoids as my next feature, but Bobby, the back box is amazing. I appreciate everybody that's tuning in with your, your feedback, I, I'm excited, but just to see what else I got going on here, I really like that I have a full on trackball setup. So I have all these trackball games that are on here, including, you know, our, our most favorite, um, I think I have it on here, uh, trackball recently played. I love playing some, some Simpsons bowling. This is pretty fun to play with the trackball. So I can, I can do this really quick if you guys wanna see it. Uh, but this, it, I love the, the arcade controller because now I can control everything, navigate my VPX menu. And this is a really awesome setup where you can play trackball games and everything else on this control panel. I love that they fixed the eight-way gates. I still have to do a formal review of my arcade control panel, um, but this is fun. Now I have a, I don't have, and none of my other cabs in my arcade have a trackball in it. So this Legends Pinball is now my trackball cab too. And the trackball plays fantastic. So security code error. Come on, I want to play some Simpsons bowling. Let's go. Let's go. This wasn't before. Uh, the machine might not run correctly. Hmm. This was running okay before. I wonder what was up with it. I can play some centipede. 
Please wait. Time. I am now loading up the game. I love Have the fun. the uh, pinup popper lady. She's pretty fun, right? <laughs> that one up fake pinball looks like mice. Bobby in his uh, anti arcade one up stance, man. Look at you. I still like my arcade one up pinball very much. Thank you very much. It works perfectly as a laptop stand. See it? it it's a perfect height. I have my laptop on it. It works great for me to be able to, to play my other game. Why is it giving me an error? This was working yesterday just fine. Oh no. All right. That's annoying. All right, so maybe no Simpsons pinball. But I also have all these other arcade games on here as well. I have a full arcade playlist. It's fun. It's all in Popper, so this is just a vertical playlist build setup. Dialed in, ready to go. <laughs> Tough night. Thanks, WKRP SimC. Some things just aren't going your way, but we did half the installation. We just got to tweak everything. So that's the problem. That's that's the beauty and the joy of playing all these tables that you now have the ability to play all these games and tell yeah. if it works. I'm going to try another table and see if it's good. Let's do, let's do Pinbot machine, Brighter Pinbot. Let's see if this actually, let's just try it. Let's try another table and see if this works. Uh, it's not Bobby's sauce. This is actually running a PC. And oh my goodness. Okay, so everything's all funky on this table. So like, this is where you need to d dial in your, your settings because your table is not going to be set up correctly. There's a table that I've run before. Good old Star Wars. Please wait. I am now loading up the game. Have fun. So maybe that's a bad one. Do you have any requests? <laughs> uh, on your sound card settings, which is each jack and input set to? Um, you want to make sure that the front channel input is set to rear and rear input to side. I did, yeah. So I have my main two speakers set to the 2.1 channel, the front one set to back or rear, and then the ones back here set to the rear side ones for sure. Saucy is more sweet and sour. So yeah, this is just running a, a, a playlist in Pinup Popper where I have all the games. So I have VPX installed on here. This is my arcade playlist. And then I have FX3. This is all my FX3 games. It takes a lot of time to set up all the media in Pinup Popper. So I don't have it completely dialed in just yet, but it's, it's a labor of love for anybody that knows when you're setting up your own image, it just takes time. But I love that I have vertical arcade games. I have my trackball playlist. I have FX3 and I have VPX. I, I probably, I don't know if I'll get into future pinball. It's just another one of those things that I hadn't really dived into, but I, I'm pretty happy with VPX right now uh, for sure. PK is here. Thank you guys so much. We need a back box swap out next. Yes, the premium back box mod by Bobby Vu has been giving everybody beautiful ideas. So look at it. You can use your stock DMD or back glass as a DMD and then the big size monitor there. So uh, it was absolutely gorgeous and worth it. I really like the design overall aspects of everything. The last thing I need to do is add in solenoids, contactors. I'm going to be adding in for folks that missed it earlier. Where is it? Where's my phaser? Uh, well, I have like a little toy phaser that I'm going to make a launcher, but I also have a, this is a 3D printed phaser that my good buddy George Adana uh, gave to me. So we're going to be making a launcher into a phaser to add in the front. And oh, here it is right here. This is this is my phaser that I'm going to be adding into the front. So we'll have a launcher phaser to be able to put in the front. And then after that's done, I'll be done. I'll be able to do a formal showcase. But check out Bobby Vu and his soon-to-be tutorial on doing your premium back glass mod. I hope this was helpful to see a sample version of installation of surround sound feedback. And uh, I hope this was a not what to do on setting up and tweaking the settings. So I'm going to go back to it. Once I get everything dialed in, I'll make another video to showcase all my settings properly set up. But thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, if you guys have any last questions, let me know. If you want to use this opportunity to talk to PK, he's here in the chat. Let me just see if there's any last things in chat that I can check out and answer. Uh, PK, how far out are pinball joysticks for Nod buyers? 
uh, PK says, in the coming weeks. That's great news. So yeah, for folks that ordered the control panel during National Owners Day, I hope that you guys will be getting it soon because it's like it's almost a must-add addition to the pinball. So I and it looks really great. The form factor of it, fantastic. I really like the control panel and, and the way it adds to the user interface design is the biggest thing for me. Very cool. Dean, you never got your stickers from you. <laughs> Don't worry, Mrs. Kong's arrest just signed all the stickers as I did this weekend, and I just printed out uh, all the mail merges. So I will get those in the mail this week. So apologies for for the sticker delay. I won't be a P Dubs and ghost you guys for that long, but hopefully that should be good. Uh, B, you're a genius. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bobby. You love your VPN call. Uh, thanks, Camo. Prefer the blackout on the legs. Yeah, I think everybody just gonna have their own preference, right? So the chrome trim and the chrome back box and just the I, it felt more space-ish to me to have everything there and I switched out the the legs. Uh, it's just a preference. So uh, whatever people do, it's just gonna be up to them. Yeah, sticker free here. <laughs> Any chance there will be another sale on the control deck once available? Missed out nod and now sad. Oh, killer penguins. I hope so. Uh, you know, I think their next national owners day for at games is going to be somewhere in September. Um, I'll move this camera to start looking over here so you guys can see me while I'm chatting to close out the stream. If there's any other last questions. Um, yeah, I think there's going to be another National Owners Day in September, if I'm not mistaken. So stay tuned if there's hopefully other 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 deals that will be happening for all the app games, folks. There's Mrs. Kong's arrest in the background. Hello. She's waving. <laughs> She's like, nope. Nope. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. All right. That's why you're here. You can't wait to copy me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So it's uh, the back box mod is the biggest thing that I, for folks that may be seeing why I have this, uh, Star Trek mod, you know, I already removed the stickers and everything. It's all cosmetic at this point. So I'm really just focusing on the internals. Um, so hopefully you can contact Bobby or do your own back box, but doing that will be the hardest part. But now that I have the beautiful premium back box, I think it's absolutely fantastic and gorgeous and really completes the look of the cab. So I really like it. Hit me up if you need any help with your VPN. Thanks, Panic Flip Gaming. I definitely will. Uh, I appreciate that. Nod is Labor Day weekend. Woohoo! PK confirmed it. So Autumn Day, Labor Day weekend is your next National Owners Day. So save up for some good deals. They definitely had some good deals. I hope the Tetris cab comes by then because I have my Tetris cab on the way too, ordered. So I really appreciate that. Great job. SSF is truly next level and will steal your phrase. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I hope to get that going. Plus the solenoids, which I'll be working on wiring and doing some testing. But I, I plan to do some fine tweaking and tuning with this and then I'll post updates later on. Um, yes, to die for, dope. <laughs> yes, he is absolutely dope. Hey, Polo, B, you can't stop looking at that box box. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Thank you guys so much. All right, I'm going to sign off here. We were successful in getting everything installed, but um, maybe not just the rest of the sounds and optimize. Uh, Mrs. Kong's arrest, say goodbye. You're in the shot. Bye. See you guys next time. Bye.